In this video, we're going to be talking about thermodynamic efficiency. Thermodynamic efficiency asks a simple question, which is, how good are we at turning heat into work? Or, writing this in a more quantitative way, um, we can define an efficiency, which is epsilon, and that's going to be equal to the total work out divided by the total heat in. And recall that in a system, in a, in a thermodynamic system, in a cycle, you always return back to the point that you're in, that you started in the PV diagram. And so you always end up with a system that has as much energy as it did at the beginning and is going to do some work. So you, uh, just to conserve energy, you cannot do more work then you put energy in. And so efficiency is always less than or equal to 1. And we can do this uh, for a specific example. And so we're going to uh, do it for the Carnot cycle. So if you recall, the Carnot cycle is a specific cycle through our PV diagram. And this cycle is starting out at some point. We proceed along an isothermal path, so that has a temperature of T hot, and we're going to go clockwise through this. Then we proceed from, from some initial pressure and volume to a second, initial, initial, uh, second pressure and volume. Then we go from T hot at a constant pressure, and this is called an isochoric process, down to a cold uh, isotherm. We then go back to along the cold isotherm from our larger volume, which we're going to call V2, to our smaller volume, which we're going to call V1. And there's another uh, video that I have done uh, that explains this. Oh, in that last part, uh, we go from that cold isotherm to the hot isotherm. And I suggest you go back to uh, the previous video on the Carnot cycle um, to see exactly what goes on in this case. And so what we can do is calculate the efficiency of this specific cycle. And the important thing to recall is that we put heat in and the net heat in goes in specifically during the hot cycle. And that is the energy that's input into the system and then the total work done can be calculated as well. Now recall that the efficiency of the system is defined as the work out, the work produced, the network, in other words, divided by the heat that goes into the system. And so, of course, in these systems, some heat is just lost as waste heat, um, and that is what reduces the efficiency. The more energy that goes out as waste heat, uh, so in other words, the more energy that goes out during the cold phase of that Carnot cycle, the less efficient this is going to be. And so we can rewrite this uh, in terms of this expression in terms of the work done by the Carnot cycle specifically. And here it is. And when we do this, um, what we're seeing here is that on the top in the numerator, we have the net work done by the Carnot cycle. And again, refer to the video on this uh, to, to see that. And then down here at the bottom, we have the heat that is put into the cycle during the expansion of the engine. It goes from a small volume to a large volume because that's when the energy goes in. The heat gets put into the system. And what you can see immediately is that most of these terms can cancel out. The number of moles cancels out. The ideal gas, gas constant cancels out and the change in volume cancels out. And what we see is that what is important here are the differences in temperature between, uh, you know, the, is the differences in temperature. And so we can simplify this to say that the efficiency uh, for specifically the Carnot cycle is T hot minus T cold divided by T hot. And so this also works out to be, and you can see that the T hots cancel out, it's going to be 1 minus T cold over T hot. And so um, this is the efficiency of the system. 
And so what you can see immediately upon looking at this is that if T cold is comparable to T hot, then the system is going to be very inefficient. However, if the, temp the cold temperature is very cold, or the hot temperature is very hot, or in general, they are very different from each other, then you can have a very efficient system. So let's work through an example. And the specific example that we're going to do is a car engine. So imagine that a car engine is a Carnot heat engine. And it isn't exactly, but it's quite close. And so in a, in a car, um, gasoline, when it combusts, produces a temperature of something like 300 Celsius, which is around um, 573 Kelvin. So this is actually a typo. It should be 573. Um, and the cold temperature is going to be something like room temperature, whatever it happens to be, um, somewhere around, you know, we'll call it 20 Celsius or 293 Kelvin. And so what we can do now is just calculate the efficiency. And the efficiency is just going to be 1 minus T cold over T hot. And of course, it's very important to put this in terms of the, uh, of the temperature in Kelvin. So it's going to be 1 minus 293 Kelvin over 573 Kelvin. And when I run the numbers, I see that this gives me something like 0.488. So that means that this is about 49% efficient. And so this actually teaches us something very interesting about car engines, and that is that the cold temperature does not vary tremendously from place to place. And so, you know, because uh, the cold temperature, the cold reservoir, is the external environment. And so it does change sort of plus or minus 50 Kelvin, uh, but not a lot. Whereas the thing that you can control is the hot temperature. And the bigger the hot temperature is compared to the cold temperature, um, the more efficient this system is going to be. So for example, if instead of a 300 Celsius, we had a uh, hot temperature, we had a, let's just say, Tc of 500 Celsius, or 773 Kelvin, then that's going to translate into an efficiency of 1 minus T cold over T hot of, you know, we plug in 293 Kelvin for T cold and 773 Kelvin for T hot, and we get and we get uh, point zero point six two one, so it's about sixty two percent efficient, and so you have to uh, get the temperature really really high to make this substantially more efficient, and the efficiency here is the maximum efficiency that you can ever get, and so uh, in my sort of hypothetical car engine. If this is really my hot temperature of 500 Celsius, then my, I cannot ever get more than 62% of the thermal energy that's liberated by burning gasoline in my internal combustion engine into work. So 38% of that, no matter what I do, is going to be gone. And of course, this is the theoretical maximum, so it's possible that whatever machine that I actually build is going to be less efficient than that. And so, in general, uh, if the two temperatures are the closer together T, uh, T cold and T hot are, and this is actually T hot, uh, the closer together T cold and T hot are, the less efficient the system is going to be. So if you think of the human body as a thermodynamic system, one more example, so you know we'll call uh, for a human T hot is going to be our body temperature, which works out to be something like um, 37 Celsius or 310 Kelvin. And you can imagine that if our body is uh, dumping out heat into the ambient, uh, into the room, where it's a temperature of 20 Celsius or 293 Kelvin, we can calculate the efficiency of this. And when we do that, we see that the efficiency of the human body is just 1 minus T cold over T hot, again, and when we plug the numbers in, we see that it ends up being a number 
of something like 0 0.055. So it's only about 5% efficient. And by the way, this is 293 Kelvin, not 239 Kelvin. So um, because the temperature, if you, if you treat a human body as a Carnot engine, it's going to be incredibly inefficient uh, compared to something like a car, just because the, uh, up, the hot and cold temperatures are very, very close together. Thank you very much.